Jack Van Beeyenen last updated 0500, August 19, 2017 Former Wallabies captain John Eels visits New Zealand with Buck Shelford to get to grips with the meaning of the All Blacks car mate Harker. On July 6, 1996, John Eels captained a Wallabies rugby team that ignored the All Blacks Harker. While the likes of Zinzan Brook, Michael Jones, Jonah Lomu and Andrew Mertens formed up in the center of the pitch for Carmate, Eels' team continued warming at a windy, wet athletic park, Wellington. In the often fraught history of Australia-New Zealand sporting relations, it's not quite underarm bowling but it came close. Former Wallabies captain John Eels visits New Zealand in a new documentary for Discovery Channel to come to grips with the meaning of the All Blacks' Harker. Eels has never been comfortable with his part in ignoring the Harker, and earlier this year he decided to revisit the decision he was part of making. Read more Former Wallabies Captain John Eels learns Harker in documentary John Eels McCaw at Heart of World Cup Victory John Eels Wallabies back row better than All Blacks trio All Blacks great Buck Shelford was John Eels guide in New Zealand. With a documentary crew in tow, he jetted across the Tasman. He wanted to come to grips with the hackers place in Kiwi culture, and to finally establish whether the team had made the right decision. It's easy to forget that at the time the Wallabies' stance on the Harker WASNT universally condemned. Even some New Zealanders thought it was fair enough. Some Australians thought it was a disgrace, some thought, good on you for sticking it up them, Eels says. Eels playing for the Wallabies against the All Blacks. Eels' guide on his quest to understand the hacker's meaning was none other than Wayne Buck Shelford. Shelford, who has now Puhi affiliations, revitalized the All Blacks hacker during his time captaining the team from 1987 to 1990. Eels played against Shelford once, at the start of his career when the All Blacks great was playing for Northampton in England and Eels was representing Queensland. Since then they've met many times. John Eels tried his hand at a Rotorumare's hacker. He's a wonderful guy and HES held with a great deal of respect. And you can see why he was such a great leader, HES so firm in his opinions and a very deep thinker about things as well, Eels says. Shelford took Eels on a journey that included stops at a Rotorua Marau the site where Athletic Park once stood Torangi, near where the Maori chief T. Rao Paraha created the carmate Haka Eden Park in Auckland, where he confronted several former All Blacks who played the 1996 test in the grave of the late Jonah Lomu. One of the many things Eels learned about Haka is the way it unifies Maori and other strands of New Zealand culture as tradition recognised as important by New Zealanders of multiple ethnicities. John Eels took the opportunity to pay his respects at Jonah Lomas' grave. Lomu played in 1996 but was one player Eels will never be able to apologise to. For Eels, engaging with the Harker highlighted Australia's lack of a similar unifying tradition. I think we've started to take some steps towards recognising our Indigenous heritage as a nation, more than we have in the past, he says. I think we're some way from finding the right thing to do. But it won't be anything like the Harker. Eels also canvassed former rugby playing colleagues, including the likes of George Gregan and New Zealand's Andrew Mertens, to get a range of opinions on the Harker debacle. Making the documentary also provided an opportunity to catch up with old mates. Sport you're not doing something that's more important than anyone else, but what you're doing is something that is probably more emotive than the average person's job, and you're really living a very vivid life when you're doing it, Eels says, you sort of lose perspective on what it's like to be a professional sports person yourself. I stopped playing 16 years ago, and that time seems to have gone pretty quickly, but that understanding of what it's like day in day out in the trenches you do lose a bit of that perspective, so when you're with your old teammates it's always good catching up and reminding yourself of those moments. There's no doubt in Eel's mind that ignoring the Harker was a mistake even at the time he says he knew that was the case. But is there an ideal way to respond to the All Blacks' fearsome war dance? There is a best way, and the best way is you've got to connect somehow with yourselves, Eels says. The enduring power of the Harker is its ability to connect the team within each other, and also with their heritage, history and their country. The All Blacks don't have a mortgage on that. And that for me was the critical lesson of the whole documentary. He cites Ireland's figure off eight formation, which they adopted when facing the Harker in Chicago last year as a tribute to former player Anthony Foley, as an example of the correct way to respond. As the All Blacks were connecting with each other and their history, the Irish were doing the same, albeit in a different way. They went on to win the match, their first ever triumph over New Zealand. 
In 1998, two years after getting hammered by the All Blacks on that miserable Wellington Day, the Wallabies began a pre-game ritual where an Australian player from the past handed out the team's match jerseys. It's a tradition that Eels says ties the players to their heritage, and continues to this day. Do these pre-game traditions really give that much of an advantage or to put it another way, did Eels Wallabies side lose so badly in Wellington because of the way they reacted to the Harker? It was, if you like, the first and maybe second dominoes in a series of things that didnt go right, but it definitely had an impact on that game, Eels says. Maybe I was a bit different, but I feel that we went out on the field that day and a lot of us weren't really bought into that idea of not facing the Harker. So before we went out there, we went out onto the field disconnected on a really important point, and not feeling comfortable about what we were going to do as a team in the first few minutes we were out there on the field. And I think that disconnection just was enough to take our minds slightly off the job, and then playing in conditions you don't face often in Australia. We never really recovered from that. John Eels reveals the Harker airs on Discovery Channel on Sunday, August 20 at 7.30pm. Stuff.